Hiya, hiya. This is that little jar I made a couple videos back. Let me show you in the light. Try to get some light right here. The creator's name written in Hebrew. I've never written in Hebrew before. Not even with pen and paper. Thought why not do it with some glass. But I wanted to show y'all a video about a sacred pipe. As a maker of pipes, I find it to be really interesting, the story about peace pipes and how they're made and how they look. I've been making pipes for going on 20 years. I've probably made over 100,000 pipes in my time. Many, 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 many peace pipes, shall we say. And I would like to think that I have contributed some way to spreading some of the peace with the peace pipes. Never really seen somebody get a pipe from me and not have a smile when they get their pipe. <laughs> so I just want y'all to check out how a peace pipe is made. I want you to listen to this story of the sacred pipe. Tell me what you think. Hiya, hiya. I'm on my way to meet a man who has been chosen to lead his people in an epic struggle, one that also requires superhuman endurance. He's asked me to come to Devil's Tower in Wyoming. This is Chief Arvo Looking Horse, the chosen one of the Nakota, Lakota, and Dakota tribes. Akola, Nele Washte. Aha, Washte, Wopilat Hunka. I brought him a gift of tobacco for his sacred ceremonies. Oh, uh -huh. thank you. So, Chief, tell me, why did you want me to meet you here at Devil's Tower? We call it Mato Tipila. Mato Tipila. Ah, that's one of our PowerPoints of prayer, of worship. It's like a church. This is where White Buffalo Calf Woman brought the sacred pipe to our people. So the story is that 19 generations ago, our people were camped here. At the time, there was no more food because people were abusing life. From a distance, they saw a cloud. And then from that cloud, there's a woman. She brought that sacred pipe. She said, I'm bringing this sacred bundle to you that you shall live in peace and harmony. The white buffalo calf woman taught Chief Arvo's people how to respect Mother Earth and worship the great spirit with the sacred pipe she gave them. Does this still exist? Yes. Since the age of 12 years old, I've been uh, the keeper of the sacred white buffalo calf bundle or pipe. They call me Chanupa Awayanka. Chanupa Awayanka. Mm, hear me yet. The white buffalo calf pipe is so sacred that Chief Arville cannot let anyone outside his tribes see it. So your grandmother was the keeper of the pipe. Yeah. She said that you were to be next in line. Yes. My grandmother, on her deathbed, she told uh, my family, 
We are at the crossroads, earth changes, climate changes, and that if the people don't straighten up, then he shall be the last bundle keeper. Long-stemmed with an elaborately carved stone bowl, this is a native North American pipe. Historically, it was reserved for special occasions, such as the signing of peace treaties, which is why European settlers called it the peace pipe. Native legend has it that the mystical buffalo calf woman gave native people the first sacred pipe. It's believed to have spiritual powers. The wisps of smoke from the stone bowl are seen as prayers rising to the creator. The pipe maker starts with wood like ash or sumac. These species are soft at the core, so they can easily be hollowed out with the red hot tip of a thin piece of metal. He plunges the smoking hot wire into the soft core of the wood and it quickly burns through creating the passageway through which tobacco smoke can be drawn. Now with a plane, he shaves off the tree bark and shapes the outside of the wood, creating a smooth, slim stem. For effect, he carves decorative angled swirls into the wood with a rasp. He then whittles one end of the stem to transform it for attaching the pipe bowl. He now confirms the diameter is right by checking it against the template. Sanding is now required between the swirls to smooth away gouges left by the rasp. He files a notch into the stem just below the swirls. The beading artist wraps fringe leather around the notch and places a brightly colored accent piece on top. She strings glass beads around the leather wrap notch, working with a pattern and color scheme in mind. Years ago, Native Americans obtained beads through trade with European settlers and threaded them onto pieces of animal sinew using a needle made of bone. The colors of these beads can really make a statement. A string of red might signify vibrancy and long life, while mixing colors could represent a spiritual burst of energy. The pipe stem is now complete and ready for the stone bowl. For that they mine red clay rock, called pipestone. Pipestone is soft and this means it's easy to carve. It's also smooth and takes a high polish. He splashes water onto a chunk to make any flaws more apparent as he evaluates it for carving. With his selection made, he now begins to trace a basic template of a pipe bowl onto the chunk. He saws through the stone along the penciled lines using just a hacksaw. The rock is fairly easy to cut. It's essentially compressed clay. Now nicely contoured, the stone is really starting to look like a pipe bowl. With a series of finer tools, he flattens one end and then sculpts the shape of an eagle head onto it. He wields a rotary tool with a fine bit to carve eyes and feathers. Traditionally, natives use sharp flint or bone to engrave details. He now drills into the stone to hollow out the shank and the actual tobacco bowl. For early natives, this job was very labor-intensive. They gouged out the stone with an arrowhead attached to a stick. He rinses the eagle pipe bowl and then sands it while wet for an even smoother finish. He uses a blowtorch to heat the stone. Once hot, it readily absorbs beeswax as he rubs it into the pores. Beeswax gives the pipe stone bowl a nice satin sheen. After a dip in cool water to solidify the wax, he scratches away some of it along the detail work, including the eyes and feathers. This adds definition and contrast. After a bit of tinkering, the wooden pipe stem fits snugly into the stone shank. He peers down the pipe to confirm that the stem is perfectly aligned with the bowl. This sacred pipe is now ready for any special occasion. 
They've used a combination of traditional techniques and modern power tools to produce this pipe, reconciling the ancient and new in perfect harmony. I'll smoke to that. 